Hello, my name is Ben Wright. I'm a chef at Running Park Hotel. I'm doing a little cookery demo for everyone. It's part of the HG Lockdown Fest and it's supporting the hospital charity in Harrogate, or known as the Harrogate Hospital Charity. If you've got any money spare, please send it online, donate it. We're on about £200 so far. It's very, very early days. That's from the Thursday, so this will be posted on at least Saturday or Sunday, so it should be considerably bigger at that point. What I've got is a simple curry sauce. It's just a chicken curry sauce, very similar to kind of like a Chinese takeaway. It's got a few Chinese ingredients in there. It's not strictly kind of Indian or South Indian, anything like that. It's got a nice mixture. It's very Hong Kong-esque. So I'll get cracking and I'll show you how to cook it. I'll put the ingredients on the screen for the sauce now and then you can do it at home. It's a bit easier to do. And I'll just run through the different ways to prepare it and the different ways you can switch out ingredients because this is really flexible so you don't have to stick to that exact recipe. First we're going to prep the onions and there's a very specific way to do this that people at home, they don't really know how to prep onions properly. There's a very specific way. First of all, never get rid of this stuff. This is gold dust when you're making stocks and any kind of soups. Even the skins, just chuck them in and then you can pass it afterwards. I always, when I chop vegetables or prep vegetables, I always have a little plastic tub in my freezer and I chuck everything in there. And then when I want to make them, when I've got enough in there for a full stock, I'll take it out and use it. And then if I've got any kind of meat scraps as well, I'll make a, a nice meat stocks or even fish as well. So just always cut in half, peel like that, turn it off. It's so much easier. People, for some reason, like to peel their onions when they're whole. It's so much easier to cut it in half first. Then the next one as well, this is two onions. Now I've had a, a crow quirking for about 10 minutes just before this, so hopefully he doesn't join in with the show. But after all, I'm outside, so that's what I expected to happen. I'm just gonna clean. I wanna get rid of as much of this skin as possible because it's not very nice to eat. So the next step is how to cut an onion. So you've cut it in half like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna slice down like this. Now, this recipe, it's, it should be quite fine. You don't want it too chunky because it's basically it's just like a smooth sauce. It's not like a big kind of uh, collection of big, uh, can't even speak. It's not a collection of uh, kind of roughly chopped vegetables. Now, if you cannot be bothered to cut vegetables, which I completely understand, you can always chuck this in the uh, in any magic mix or any kind of blender you've got, as long as it's like not completely turned into mush and it's got a bit of texture. I'll show you the size that you'd want, it's absolutely fine. So you go slowly, ensure you go slowly so you get all the onion when you slice, because if you start rushing, you get all the flared onion at the sides and you lose time because you have to go through it all again. Just so you've got these little bits at the end, just want to slice through them like that. Just slice across like this. Don't lose any of the onion. Again, straight into stock. So that's what it should be like. Again, just go for a quick chop through just in case there's any major bits. But it's that, that is a good size. I'm going to repeat this with the rest of the onions and then I'll get back to you. I've chopped all the onions now, as you can see. Nice and fine, but not complete paste basically. What I've got next is the garlic. Now if you absolutely hate chopping vegetables this recipe is perfect for you because all it is is just onions and garlic. You don't have to chop anything else. And that's why it's so quick. And I like to do this when I've got something else to do and I'm really really busy. I just cook a quick meal and this recipe I actually haven't bought anything extra to do this this recipe. It was already all in my cupboards except coriander which unfortunately 
I don't have with me because I didn't think it was worth it to go all the way to the shop and you know, risk spreading the virus just for the sake of a bit of coriander. You can always just, if you've got some hanging around, you can always add it in. So what I'm going to do, slice the top and the bottom. This garlic's get, getting on a bit now, so it's, it might be a bit funky, but there you go, that's what you've got. You don't want to be throwing stuff away now. Now, of course, you'd normally crush this, but it's already quite shriveled up, so it doesn't really need to be crushed. But normally, if you can't get the the garlic out the little clove, you just give it a crush with your knife or with your that part of your hand. So what we're going to do next is just slice this up. Now, excuse the samurai, I use this massive knife for everything. You don't have to use a knife this big. So I'm just going to slice it finely. And then just something to watch out for. This is quite old now. You can see it in here. It's got that little green bit in there, which you really don't want because it's quite bitter. So you just want to slice, I'm going to slice it in half, and then take it out. You just want to avoid cooking this because it's not a very nice flavour. Unfortunately, this is normally when you buy it fresh from the supermarket, it shouldn't have this. So just slice it again. This one is fine, but should be alright. I'm just going to slice it in half anyway, just to check there's no green inside. Ah, that's fine. Right, so after I've chopped all this like this, I'm just going to run for it again with my knife. I won't show you that because you'll be here forever. Once I've run for it nicely, we'll get onto the cooking process. Next step is cooking the curry. Now what I've got here is the veg ready. I just wanted to show you, it's something called the wok clock. I learned this online, it's quite a good little tip from Jeremy Pang on School of Wok. When you have a lot of vegetables to cook in a quite a quick period of time, put them on a plate. Obviously there's not many vegetables on this occasion, but then you can separate each vegetable into different parts of the plate. And then when you're ready to cook, all you have to do is just tip it in, put it down, tip it in, and then you're not running around all the time and it's just much quicker and then you don't burn your vegetables. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna heat this up, add a bit of vegetable oil, Well, when I say a bit, a lot, because you need a lot of vegetable oil, it emulsifies into the sauce, so it won't leave you with some greasy sauce, basically. But it's really important, because then you, you want to make sure nothing sticks too badly. You want a bit of caramelization on the bottom, but you know, not completely stuck. And with pans like these, they can stick quite easily, and that's what, what they're designed to do, so you can get some lovely caramelization. So you just, as I say, check, make sure it's hot enough, so then it leaves a tiny bit more. You just want a little sizzle, and then after you've added the onion, you're going to add the garlic, and then the chicken. Now, you, the, the big thing about this dish is not to colour things too, too intensely. It's more of a light curry sauce, so normally if you wanted to make a really rich, dark curry sauce, you cook the onions so they're really dark and then you cook the chicken so it's really really caramelised but with this you just want to lightly colour it so I'm going to add the onions now for the chicken I've just got some uh, chicken breasts 
that have been sliced into quite big pieces. You want you want them quite big so they stay nice and moist and they're not falling apart in the sauce. So that's looking good. I'm going to skip till the onions are nicely softened. I'll do a bit of a, a speed up and I'll come back to you. So, I've cooked off the onions, one or two minutes. Added some salt, that's really important because it actually cooks the onions quicker because it draws out the moisture. Then you want to add the garlic, the chicken, I just added it about 30 seconds ago, so it's really not too important to colour it too massively because I think it, it takes away from the, the light taste of the sauce. Then as you see on the bottom we've got this kind of colour at the bottom, that's absolutely fine, that's all flavour. And then once you add the liquid, it should t get that colour off the bottom of the pan and bring it into the sauce, which is all flavour. So, I think at the point where I'm happy with it now. I'm not colouring the chicken, like I said. And what I'm going to do next is simply add a bit of soy sauce and then also I'm going to add some sesame seeds and some, uh, some curry powder. Not in that order, but I'm going to add some curry powder first. About three teaspoons. You've got to be very generous with it. Depends on how strong yours is. If you feel like you've got a really, really strong flavorful one, I'd probably tone it down to about two, but this one's quite mild. And then also, if you end up not adding enough, you can always add a bit later on. It's, be it's better to add it at the start, so you can toast it lightly, because it brings out the flavor a bit better. And then a teaspoon of sesame seeds, probably I'll make it two. Sesame seeds are kind of the main flavour of this, so you, you want to be generous. I might, I'm, you know, I'm feeling happy today, I might add another. If you don't have sesame seeds, you can add some toasted sesame oil, that's a great alternative. So I'll just put it on to quite high heat. I just want to toast the, the powder lightly. And then once you start to smell a bit of a nutty aroma, you want to add the soy sauce and then a few chili flakes. Just be careful with chili flakes because they can burn very easily, so I only add them in 30 seconds before I add any liquid. So it's not, make sure you've got the liquids ready as well because you don't want it to start burning. This stops it cooking any further. I'm just going to add a touch of soy sauce. This is a dark soy sauce. And then you want to add a few chilli flakes as well. You can use chilli powder, anything you want, and you don't even have to add chilli if you don't like chilli. So very quickly put that before it starts burning. And then I've got some coconut cream here. This is about 250 ml. You can use coconut milk, if you're desperate, you can use desiccated coconut. It doesn't really matter too much. Just as long as you've got a nice creamy uh, additive. So you can add some cream. A big recommendation is adding a touch of evaporated milk. They use that in a lot of dishes in Hong Kong. You just want something that's kind of rich. Try to avoid milk because it's not very rich. So you don't get that nice rich flavor. But again, if you only have milk, just make sure you add some fat into there, so some butter or something like that. As what I'm doing now, I'm scraping all this flavor off the bottom. And it all comes off easily. As long as you've added cold liquid to a hot pan, it should come off easily. So we've got the curry here ready. And then what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna add sugar, this is about a teaspoon. I'd say always do it to taste. Depends how sweet you like your curries. But this is kind of a sweet flavoured curry. Similar to a katsu that you get in you know, your sushi, all these places. And then what I'm going to do next, 
Just let that cook out for about, what, three minutes. And then what I've got at the side here is chicken stock. Now, just for the sake of showing you, I've actually used a, a chicken stock cube. Absolutely fine. As I say, we can't, we can't afford to be traveling around too much nowadays. So if, just use what you've got in your cupboards. And what I've actually done with this chicken stock is the scraps I showed you earlier from the onion skins. I've actually cooked those in a bit of oil, all the skins, until they start to blister. And then I've added the uh, stock with the stock cube into the pan. And it's, I've cooked it through for about half an hour. So I've basically got like an onion infused chicken stock. And it's a really nice way to use up that scraps. Of course, if you, do, you don't have to do that. You can just heat up, put the kettle on and chuck the chicken stock cube in a, in a little um, jar or something like that and then just pour it straight in to the uh, curry sauce here. So I've cooked that through nicely. What I'm going to do next, I've got this on the heat. Personally, I think it's a bit better when you've got it ready on the heat because then you're not cooling down the curry so it cooks a bit quicker. So I'm going to add it straight in. This is about 500 ml, but I don't think you'll need all of that. What you want to do now is cook this through. And now it's up to you at this point if you want quite a thin sauce because it depends what you're going to use it for. So if you want this to stay quite thin, you can use it for you know laxers, any kind of soups, things like that, noodle, kind of like ramen type things. What I've got here is just a, a cornstarch slurry, so I've just got a bit of corn, corn flour, about one teaspoon. I've just mixed it with a bit of water and then you can add that in to thicken it lightly. There's loads of other ways you can thicken sauces. You can add just a normal, just a touch of plain flour. Make sure you mix it with water beforehand. You can use potato starch, lots of different chefy things. So I'll let that cook through a bit longer. I'm going to, personally, I like this sauce so it's really, really, really reduced so it's really intense in flavour. So I'm going to cut to when it's nicely reduced and then I'll tell you what to do from there. I've cooked this out now. I think it's the, the point where I think it's nicely reduced. What I'm going to do now, just to thicken it slightly more, is just again add my cornstarch slurry. So that's just the one teaspoon of corn flour with a touch of water. And then just add that in. That should take about one or two minutes just to cook through and thicken the sauce. And it also helps when you've got noodles or pasta, uh, whatever you've got in the fridge basically, it helps it stick to the pasta and whatever vegetables, things like that, it helps stick to the vegetables. So you don't just end up with a sauce that kind of falls off every time you want to take a bite basically, as weird as that sounds. So I'm just going to cook that through for one more minute and then the very, very important thing that people never do is season. Because that's the difference between a dish you get in a restaurant and a dish you do at home is that you wonder why it's so much nicer and it's because people perfectly season things. So I'm just going to add a touch of salt now and one little tip, I have my little salt pot here. You can use little shells and they're really good little scoops for salt instead of digging your fingers in there and getting your fingers covered in salt all the time and then also it makes the salt a bit dirty. I'm just going to taste now so I've mixed this around. I'm happy with that now. Nice and sweet, salty and then what I'd recommend if you want to you can add a touch of lemon juice. Now I'm I'm inspired by the moment and I might have a touch now. Any kind of vinegar, anything like that, just to balance out the sauce. What I'd recommend serving with this, if you have it, which I can't imagine many people do, is some kind of sushi rice. 
because a, a short grain, very fluffy rice, just like you would get in you know the Japanese restaurants, like yo sushi, all these things. And then what you're gonna do with this is just gonna put it with, if you want to, you can water it down and then add it with noodles and it's a really nice kind of broth or soup. Also, you can serve it with some fresh vegetables, anything like that. It's basically completely flexible with any, anything. You can completely break the rules and do what you want with it, basically. So I'm gonna end it there, because I've showed you everything I could possibly show. Thank you very much for watching. Please donate to the hospital charity. I've been helping down there in the catering at Harrogate Hospital, and those guys are doing a really good job. And I think all the efforts they're putting in, you don't want them to go to waste. You should donate the money, help out the patients, help out the staff. It's a really great cause. And of course, please watch the other shows as well, because there's lots of other people doing lots of different content, you know, yoga, beer tasting, lots of great stuff. Thank you very much.